Take that out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at these audiometric thresholds here. Let's assume that there's bone here. I, I didn't put it on, okay? Now you see those U's? Those are my LDLs, okay? So I made them the same just for ease of fitting the device, okay? And so how I, and this is, this is the seven. What the heck is it? That's my seven, okay? I might have a four here and a three here and a two here and a one here. You're gonna do that on Monday. Your lab is pretty simple, won't take you very long. But anyway, so that's what this is. You've got your, your LDLs, they use use here for whatever reason, and then we have our audiometric thresholds, okay? Look at your dynamic range. What is it, roughly? What's the largest area? Oh, sorry, the smallest area. My apologies. This smallest area. 65. That's a 65. Yeah, so 35. 35. You got a 35 dB dynamic range. What are you going to fit? You can do an AGCI because I think 30 is the limit for AGCI. Yeah. 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 So you can do I. You can maybe get away with O. Okay. But let's do I given our rules. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to go in and I... And click on the software, and we're gonna simulate this, okay? So now the question becomes, these are my products, and I have it showing all, and then these are the things that I want, okay? High-end device, mid-end device, low-end device, economy line device, okay? So, let me give you a situation with this person. This person is a typical patient that comes to our clinic here, okay? Their median income is about forty, thirty-five dollars to $40,000, okay? There's two people at home. This gentleman is about my age. He's about 50, okay? And he is a plumber, okay? And... He is looking for devices that will allow him to hear three things. Number one, he's interested in, at work, because he's a plumber, he's got to listen for leaks. Or, or the sound of a leak, high frequency, low frequency, or mid frequency. It's typically high frequency, okay? So he's listening for a high frequency sound, but he's got a high frequency loss, so he's struggling. The second thing is, is he wants to be able to communicate with his family on Sundays and be able to listen in church. Okay, so those are the other two things. Not so big on music, not so big on TV. He just likes to chill and relax. Okay? Now, knowing that, pretty good dexterity, because if you're a plumber, you yeah. got to have really good dexterity. What device are you looking at fitting him? C-I-C, I-T-E, I-T-E. A RIC or a write or a BTE. What are we looking at here? You could do a RIC or a write or a BTE. Mm -hmm. I feel like a BTE is maybe a little overkill. Yeah. 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 That's what so we're yeah. a RIC. And he's not Bane. He's not Bane. Which makes me think you're like leaning towards the yeah. BTE since well, it's the bigger and you would do yeah. an, uh, you'd do an ear mold do with it. and do the ear mold that's like easier to get in and out of your ear and probably do either the economy or value, whatever, because he's got a lower income and he'd be more likely to buy it and use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, I'm starting to think more acoustics here. How are we going to get those highs? How are we going to get him those high frequencies that he needs? Because he wants the, that whistling sound. Is that what you're we could look at an ear hook. We could look at tubing. We could horn? look at what else can we do that will give us highs? You can bell. bell yeah. What else? Venting. Venting, yeah. Venting will get rid of some of the lows. lows. We have a problem here because he's got thresholds near 40. You want to know like a clue maybe to keep Well, rising? what about microphone positioning? Oh, Does that really matter cool. here? Yeah, well, would we, yeah. Okay, so if microphone position matters, and we want this thing to sound, and I'm not a plumber by any stretch of the imagination, I'd probably have your house flooded in about 30 minutes, but <laughs> if, if I'm thinking of this, I want this to be as natural as possible and not any kind of an, a, an acoustic shift in the sound, okay? So again, you've got to make what we call front-end decisions. 
if I was fitting this thing, I would, and, and, it, and, that, and I'm using this as an example, I would either do an ITE or a CIC. Okay. E and a Rick and a right. Is it a big difference or is it a little difference? Just ballparkish. A couple millimeters? Yeah. It probably wouldn't be. What should be in DB? Huge. Think of DB. Oh, DB. Think of DB. Yeah. Gain. Natural gain. Oh. To guess, what, like, you're gonna, when you, 10, 5, 10. You're going to get about 5 dB more gain with an ITE mic yeah. than you are with a BTE. Now. So I'm going to I'm going to go with an ITE here. That's how I would that's how I'm thinking this so thing. You try and do as much natural gain as possible. Right. right. Okay. Given the fact that this guy has a specific need. Cuz I don't want the compressed sound. Cuz I don't know what I mean that's going to sound like bubbles and then he's you know we got problems, okay? So let's go with the fact that we're just going to do this ITE here. And these are now my options. Okay. The dream and the clear are my two options. The higher the number, the more high performance the device. The lower the number, the more basic the device. Okay. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say we want something that's either value or basic. So now that leaves me three choices. Okay. So this is pretty cool because it, it tears down the devices for you. Now the question becomes, what do I want to give him in terms of uh, features? Uh, what we call um, not tech, uh, not tech, uh, yeah, technical features. I guess that's what I'll call it. In terms of technical features, he's got to talk on the phone. Plumbers have dispatchers. Mm -hmm. He's got to be able to listen to things. And what else does he want? Probably Easy. nothing. Yeah. Well, I was going to say he's young, so maybe he would um, like what you said to be able to talk on the phone. Okay. So would you get him a remote control or would you get him a volume control? What do you think? Yeah. We'll have to put... good dexterity, so... Volume control would be easier. You have to keep up with something, yeah. right? Uh, but on the same thing, if I've got my hands here... It's easier to do this than maybe do this. I don't, I don't know. But let's put a volume control on there. Let's just do that. Okay? So that's None of these, I have an option for a volume control. <laughs> okay? So these are true AGC devices. So this is how you play this thing through. Okay? Now, do I want directionality? Yeah. Or, yeah. I, sorry, I probably want a program button, right? He wants mm -hmm. different programs. Mm -hmm. I don't have that option. Okay? So I'm limited with this ITE. Let me go to a CIC. Let me just see what I have here. Do I have a volume control? No. Program button? No. Do I have a remote control? So they're wanting you to buy the remote control. So I can't have a push button, but I can have a remote control. So that's where you have to know your product lines, which is why you're doing the thing that you're doing. So you kind of get a sense of this is what I can and what I can't do. So let's assume that this gentleman says, you know what, I'm okay with a remote control. I have a watch. It's small enough. I can pin it to my watch. I can push the things here. Okay? So cool. So now we might do some directionality just because he's in church. Directionality works better in, in, in church. And so now I've got these three devices. And so now what I want to do is I want to look at this device. Okay? It gives you this damn fitting thing. I hate that fitting graph. Okay? What I'm trying to find out is how can I look at the device itself? And it doesn't give me, is it going to give me what I want? Oh, I can put all three of these up here. Look at that. No, I can't. No, I can't. Okay. It's going to, it's, it's, it's not going to give me the frequency response of this device like I would hope it would. Okay. And this is where I get frustrated looking at this stuff. Because I want to know, does this gain match, okay, my patient? So if I go in here now and I punch this thing, it's going to tell me that this fits, that fits, go away. And if I'm looking at this right, that that fits. So all of these devices fit this particular thing. Notice I've got two mics for directionality, okay. I got a place here for my uh, uh, battery. It looks like this looks like a battery cap here. Okay, so we got the choice of this D Dream 220, 110, 
this is going to be really expensive. So it's down to these two. Does that one look better to you? Or does this one look better to you? Which one looks look the same to me? Yeah, they look the same. same. Okay, which one do you want? Let's say that this, this is an older model, this is a newer model. This one, I'm making this up, is $1,000 and this one's $1,500 for each. And they're exactly the same? For the most part here, that's exact. The only difference is this has probably got a newer chip, that's got an older chip. I guess well, I'd probably just older. talk to the patient, probably. But he won't know the difference. So the patients don't understand yeah. this. Then the cheaper one. If okay. So yeah. let's go with the cheaper one. So we're going to go with this but device. But what if it goes if it's obsolete not so sooner? Well, all hearing aids are obsolete within three years. Just like technology. I mean, yeah. iPhone 5 yeah. is now obsolete. So it's so the same thing. So let's pick this guy. So we're going to pick this guy. And I'm going to tell it. Can I simulate? No hearing aids. I want it to simulate. Where simulate here? I don't want it to connect. I want it to simulate. Where simulate? Do you guys see simulate? Never worked in WideX before. Well, do we even fit WideX here? We do. Who? What do you mean who? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, no, you must select hearing aids. Okay, I didn't select any hearing aids. So I selected this device. Why is it not doing oh. Why is it not letting me do anything? Oh, I got him. Okay. So now. I think it did the dream, though. It didn't yeah, do the one that we picked. <laughs> so how do I get rid of these silly things? Okay, so it's telling me that I don't have this software. Okay, so we'll fit this one. That's fine. So now it's asking me for the vent. Okay, how do I know what vent I need? Let's, can we make this bigger? I can't. Well, they have decent hearing in the lows. Mm -hmm. So would it be a... We'd want a bigger a vent bigger to or let... Smaller? We'd want a bigger vent right to let out more the Bigger lows. lets out the lows, but lows. he's at 40. Yeah, so it's not like he has it's great, no. So maybe like a two millimeter? Because you wouldn't want it tiny, but I wouldn't want it very big, I don't think. What y'all think? What y'all think? Because I mean, that's mild to moderate in the lows. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the way that I do it is I always get a smaller vent because I can always make it bigger. 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 It's harder to take a larger uh, size diameter and plug, it up. and plug it up, but it's easier to open it up. Okay. So I'm going to go in and do the, the smaller one. But I want to show you while you're here, okay, is I can also put in what we call your real, your, we'll talk about real year next time, your, after AAA, your real year unaided gain, so this is your ear canal resonance. Right now it's average. Not everybody's going to be this. So I can put in your actual values and that'll tell me where the peak of your ear canal is, right? Quarter wave resonator. The other thing that I can do is I can go in and put in what we call your RECD. That's the difference between the 2CC coupler and the person's ear canal. So now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the gain for the difference between the manufacturer, the artificial ear, and your ear. And for kids, you have to do this, okay? We're not ready to do this, but that's what we'll do eventually, okay? So I'm going to go back to selection, and now I'm gonna to go to fitting. And I think that's how I cheat the system. Yes, okay. So now I'm in the system. And this is what I see. So I've got an I've got an output curve by frequency. What's this axis? It's output. So what does that mean? What am I looking at? So am I looking at OSPL90 or FOG? Oh, is it OSPL90? OSPL90 is what I'm essentially, and this is in a 2CC coupler. So I'm looking at the output of the device. This is telling me what the device is going to do. Where's my glasses? So now, the other thing that you can see, see this little target right here? Mm -hmm. This is the target for 65 dB. This is my target for, 55, for 50 dB. And this is my target for 80 dB. It tells me right there. Okay? So why do I have three targets here and not one like we've been talking about? 